looking at average value. Average value is not a regular integral the way that area is. It requires more than just taking a regular integral. It's still an application of integration. So of course we're going to end up taking the antiderivative and plugging in, but it is not just the integral. Average is taking a total. So the integral measures net change or total change. And then we're going to divide it by the number of numbers, which is basically what this um, paragraph explains, is that a definite integral is used to find the area under the curve. And then we find the average value by dividing it by n, the number of numbers or number of x values that we're going to. So if we're looking at finding the average value for the following function, it's a regular integral to start with, and then we're gonna divide by the number of numbers. Another way to write this, which is not written here because I think it's a little bit more confusing, is taking this and dividing it by b minus a. So either one is the same thing, right? Dividing by b minus a, dividing by two is the same thing as multiplying by one half, or Dividing by 4 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 fourth. So typically I'm going to use this not fraction notation, um, but this is all one big fraction. We're taking the total, dividing it by the number of numbers. So looking at this first one, we want to find the average value of f of x, which is 2x squared plus 8, on the interval from 0 to 3. So there's our a to b. So we're going to... Find the total from 0 to 3, total change of 2x squared plus 8 dx means we're going to take an integral. And then we're going to remember to divide by the number of numbers. So we're going to do, have a 1 over b minus a out front, 1 over 3 minus 0. We're going to remember to take 1 third of our answer or take our answer and divide it by 3 as the same thing. So I'm looking at this, this does not look like a product, a quotient, or a chain rule for a derivative. So for an antiderivative, it's going to be a basic antiderivative. I'm going to keep that one-third outside till the end. That comes from the average value formula. And just take a regular integral. So I'm going to keep the constant multiple 2. Add 1 to the power 2 plus 1 is 3. So I'll have 2 over 3, x to 3. Plus 8 is a constant, so the antiderivative is 8x. And normally we are thinking about, do we end with a plus C or an evaluation bar? This is going to be an evaluation bar problem. We're going to evaluate from 0 to 3. Again, I'll just keep that 1 third out front. So that comes from the average value formula, 1 over B minus A. Gave us that 1 third. And I'm going to plug in my upper bound minus my lower bound. So I'll grab my calculator and do 2 thirds of 3 cubed plus 8 times 3. There's my whole upper bound, minus, I'm going to plug in my whole lower bound, 2 thirds of 0 cubed plus 8 times 0, which that's kind of nice because plugging in that whole lower bound, we just get 0. So really I have 1 third of 2 thirds of 3 cubed would be 18, plus 8 times 3 is 24, so we get 2 thirds 3 cubed plus 8 times 3 ends up just being 42. So our average value, the total, the sum, found by just doing the antiderivative and plugging in to that definite integral give, gave us 42, and then we divide it by the number of numbers 3 or multiply it by 1 third. Our average value is 14. So very much like taking a regular integral, just remember out front you have this 1 over b minus a to remember when you think average value, Think not a regular integral, you have 1 over b minus a out front of a regular integral, a to b of f of x dx. I would write it, the more you write it, the easier it'll be to remember. There's our average value formula.